the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I'm assuming you're here for Ice River content and I've got a ton of it. Um, consider subscribing to my channel and then you won't miss any new Casper ASIC information. I've been covering this since day one. So anyway, I've been talking with T-Swift in my Discord. If you're not already in my Discord, I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can join. Um, he was telling me that he's got overclocks for the KS2 for 2.75 terahash 2750 gigahash you heard me right so if you have a ks2 and you want to get another an extra 750 gigahash out of your machine i'm going to show you how um, so that's a significant amount of extra hash rate for a very small amount of money 1500 caspa for an extra 750 gigahash and not only that Check out the other overclocks that he's got available. Um, the KS0, 200 giga hash at 130 watts. So that's as much hash rate as you can get from the KS0 Pro. It's not quite as efficient, um, but it's only 300 caspa. So if you've already got a KS0, you can overclock it. Um, KS1, 1 1.65 terahash, 1350 watts, 2000 caspa. Um, you might have seen my other video. I'll link it in the description where I take two KS1s, combine them into one KS2, and I overclock it. Um, but now that these overclocks are available for the KS1, I can get 3.3 terahash out of my two KS1s, and you're limited by the power supply on the KS2 to 2.725 terahash, if you know what I mean. The, the power supply on the um, KS1 and KS2 are only 2,000 watts, so you can't, I mean, I guess you could push this one a little bit more, but you don't really want to. That's kind of getting high up on the end of the power supply's uh, capabilities. So, um, I, I know you guys probably think I'm crazy, but I'm going to split apart my Franken KS2 that I just did this awesome video on, and I'm going to split it back into two KS1s because I can get 3.3 terahash instead of 2.75. So that's what I'm going to do. So look for future videos on that. KS3, I've got a KS3 on the way that I bought from T-Swift. Um, nine terahash overclocks at 3,500 watts for 6,000 caspa. So um, I've got a lot of Ice River content coming up. Like this video if it helps you, and then subscribe to my channel to watch for more. So all these overclocks are exclusive to T-Swift and the dev team that he works with. There's no free versions of the overclocks. And this is the only KS3 overclock in the industry at the time. So for Caspa mining, you want yield right now um, over efficiency. It makes more sense to yield as much Caspa as possible before the network hash rate goes up and up and up. So these overclocks will get you there. Um, they're, you know, they're at your own risk, of course. Anytime you push your machine harder than it's supposed to be pushed from the factory, you're going to void your warranty and you're going to take on the risk of having something get damaged. So just so you know, these overclocks are at your own risk. But I'm going to give them all a shot right now. One more warning before we get started. Um, this this firmware that they're sending you, these overclocks they're sending you, are linked to your individual machine. So if you've got two KS1s, you will need a file for each KS1. Um, otherwise, you are you could risk damaging your machine. Um, they're not responsible if you do. Um, it won't work, basically. So when you contact T-Swift to get these overclocks, um, know that you can, you're can. you going to have to pay for each machine that you have separately. Um, they're not responsible for any damages if you try to use these overclocks on other machines that you're not supposed to. So the first step is to reset your machine. If you don't know how, you just hold this reset button in, in the back of your device. Um, sometimes you can use a pen, sometimes a small screwdriver, whatever you need to be able to get the little button that's um, kind of indented into the machine, if you know what I mean. So you'll hold that reset button down. Then when you are done resetting your machine, power it off, restart your machine. Then I'm gonna link a firmware upgrade video in this description of this video, you're basically going to take the file that T-Swift sends you. First, try the 2750G file. Um, he's going to send you two different files, one that's 2750G, one that's 27500G underscore H. So um, you're going to want to upgrade the firmware. Use the link in the description of the video that I teach you how to upgrade your firmware with to do this. And then after you're done, you need to restart your machine again, and then you need to change your wallet address, your mining address, um, and your stratum, just like you're setting up the machine like brand new. Just change those, um, the wallet and the stratum, and set it up the way you had it before. And then just watch and wait, and make sure you're, um, you're getting around 2,750 gigahash. Um, if you don't get that gigahash that you're expecting, 
redo all these steps above, but use the other file that tswift provides you, the 2750g underscore h file. So follow these instructions exactly um, to make sure that your machine works. Don't deviate from these instructions. And he will send you these instructions when he sends you your overclock files. Okay, right now I'm using the free overclocks that you can get on GitHub. And my 30 minute hash rate average is 2.14 tera hash per second at the pool. Um, my average three hour hash rate is 2.46 tera hash at the pool. I wanted to show you pool side to start with. Then let's go ahead and take a look at the web GUI. Okay, now we're in the Ice River web GUI and it's a little bit of time has elapsed since I shot that last clip, but five minute hash rate of the web GUI showing 2,503 giga hash per second, 30 minute average hash rate 2,475. So um, I wanted to show you both because the pool shows a three hour average. Um, the web GUI is only showing five minute and 30 minute average hash rates. So let's go ahead and test these out. I'm gonna do the overclocks and then we'll check and see what the hash rate is, what the power consumption is. Let's do it. Okay, got the overclocks in and check out this custom panel we got over here, Discord, T-Swift with a Z, Telegram at T-Swift USA. So he's got his uh, custom uh, icon in the web GUI. That's pretty sweet. So um, it's only been running for about 10 minutes and the hash rate um, is still going up and up and up. So I'm going to go run some errands. I got some stuff to do <laughs> and I'll be back. I'm going to let this run for a while. And then uh, once it settles in at a hash rate, I'll check the web GUI and the pool again, and then I will see how the power consumption is. So far, this is working awesome. Okay, I'm back from running errands. It's been three hours this thing's been running. And I'm not getting quite the expected hash rate. 25.89 on the 30 minute average. Um, 25, 45, five minute average, which doesn't really mean anything. Uh, you gotta wait a little while to get your average. I would expect um, higher hash rate. So I'm gonna try that other file that T-Swift provided. It is the 2750G underscore H file. Let's try that one and we'll see what the um, 30 minute average is. Okay, I've got T-Swift's overclocks punched in and I'm gonna wait 30 minutes. So while we're waiting, I wanna talk about power consumption. These are the free overclocks on my Franken KS2 with the Fruition Designs kit, 1,515 watts. We're gonna use this to compare when we do our ROI projections on T-Swift's overclocks. Next, let's talk about the temperatures. So um, temperatures are the same. Uh, my KS2, Franken KS2 was running uh, high 50s before on the exhaust side. Um, it's still exactly the same. Didn't have to change the fan settings, nothing. So um, depends on your setup. Um, also, if you have a regular KS2 with um, stock fans, you just keep an eye on your temperatures. Um, for me, the Fruition Designs kit's working perfectly on this Franken KS2. Never had to change a thing. Okay, so I've been letting it run for about an hour now, and my 30 minute average is 2660 giga hash per second. So if you remember earlier, um, the average on the free overclocks was 2475 giga hash per second. So my silicone lottery isn't real great with this Franken KS2. It was never really meant to be a KS2 in the first place. So don't forget, you might get a higher hash rate than this if you have an actual KS2. Uh, and don't forget silicone uh, silicone lottery does play a role. Let's go ahead and punch this into the ROI calculator that you might've seen in some of my other videos. And we'll see what the break even would be with my actual results. Um, so I already did this and it looks like with the machine cost, I punched in 132 because um, that's the cost of this overclock with the cost of CASP at um, 0.088 cents right now. Um, the hash rate that I got over, like increased over the free overclocks was 190 giga hash, which is like almost like getting a KS0 Pro uh, out of this thing uh, for only $132. You're getting the extra hash rate uh, that you would expect from a KS0 Pro. Of course, the wattage is a little higher, but you don't have to like spend $605 or $600 on a KS0 Pro. So um, what's more important is you're getting the extra hash rate right now. Um, so anyway, your break even on this overclock would be before New Year's of this year. Um, so about a month and a half from now, uh, December 30th, 2023. And that's with my bad silicone lottery. So let's go ahead and see if you got the actual expected uh, hash rate um, of 2.75 terahash. Let's just see what your break even would be. There we go. Okay, well, let me do full, full number. So uh, let's do 0.27 terahash per second. Let's see what the break even would be. A month from now, you will break even a month from now if you get the expected hash rate out of this um, overclock. 
if your silicone lottery is good, your silicone lottery might be excellent. You might even get more out of this thing. So um, the overclocks are a great value for the money right now. You want to get your hash rate in right now before the hash rate goes through the roof. Um, other people are going to overclock theirs too. Um, so you kind of almost want to stay up with the game. Um, so uh, don't forget, nothing I say is financial advice and you are taking on risk when you do these overclocks. I'm doing them because I'm willing to accept the risk. I want the extra hash rate right now. Well, I'm getting well, the getting's good. So uh, don't forget, you take this on at your own risk. Um, I really like these overclocks. I think they're great value for the money. So don't forget to hit up T-Swift in my Discord and tell them Greater Good Mining sent you and get these overclocks there. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. Um, it's pretty cool that we keep getting more and more hash rate out of these Kespa mining beasts. So anyway, um, hopefully this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit up T Swift on my discord, tell them greater good mining sent you. And don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good, the greater good.